CT Hippo here. Today I am at the Cedar Creek Grist Mill, a functioning water powered uh, corn and wheat mill located on Cedar Creek near Amboy, Washington. Right over the uh, bridge there, and there's the mill, I presume, or just my ugly head. I don't want to take your pick. Anyway, uh, like I said, it is indeed a functioning water powered mill, so let's go take a look. You can see the uh, penstock coming in there from the right with the overflow. And uh, to get there, we cross this wooden truss bridge, covered bridge.
flume comes in there from up the creek, feeds in the mill, that's the bypass gate. gates on the side. And yeah. Turn the back and pinion gear, it opens the wicket gates. And you yeah. can see how the inside of the guts of the turbine, they're at an angle. Yeah. So the farther you open the wicket gates, the more water goes through. Full Faster it turns, the more horsepower it makes. Yeah. Every reaction is a counter reaction. The water yeah. blasting through one way spins it the other way. Yep. Yeah. So is there a regulator mechanism for it? Yeah. It's, it's, here's, it's this rack and pinion right. that controls these wicket gates on the outside. But is it manually throttled or yeah. is there an auto? We actually, Fred it's almost has a, a, a governor done for it. Right. An auto governor so you can set it. Right. He has an, an old one. He's been restoring for the last yeah. three years. But He's had to make a lot of the parts for it. Yeah. And stuff. This, this is attached to that rack and pinion there. Mm -hmm. And a minute ago while you were outside, Randy turned this a quarter turn and the whole thing started turning. You can turn it again. It's cool that it works. It is very cool that it works. Everything works 100% correctly. Well, that's more than I can say in my world. But if they hit each other, you have little harm. It's like hitting your, like your, like scraping your elf, your knee, knee at a, at, on a moving object. Okay. Except your elf, your knees are not made of stone, to my knowledge. Bring her on up to speed, yeah. Okay. I will break. The turbine's down there through that grating. Comes up this shaft. Belt that feeds into the uh, grinder there. And the shaft continues up in an accessory belt. Which turns the accessory shaft. So we have a flywheel turning a generator there. Powers that light bulb, which I told uh, primarily acts as the tachometer. And then various other systems through this belt, the shaft belt here. Yeah, I, I think right now the consensus is for the bread flour, but we certainly will make them all. Okay. It won't be that long. Unless you're in a hurry. grinding the, like a burr grinder for grinding coffee, only it's for grinding wheat, so it's not yeah, a couple basically, stones. Basically, well, yeah. But you actually you mill it, you don't grind it, because the stones actually never touch. Right. But the product works as a dry lubricant between the stones. Yeah. And those are quartzite. Okay. Yeah. And I think I've seen flour from here. I think I've seen people who had a sack had of flour from here. Yeah. Well, I'd probably give you some, haven't I? If you came and yeah. got it, or... The way it works, you got your hopper. I'll, I'll set it up. The water ain't going yet. I'll set it up. How much corn do you got here? Oh, uh, open these cans up. Probably a bag of flour I've got to take a little bit there. Well, that, that's cornmeal. I don't know what you want. So that's, that's, that's for like cookies, pancakes. Yeah. Have to ask her. Have to make some pancakes. <laughs> I was like, look what she wants. I want pancakes. <laughs> well, I like pancakes and all. 
in our world, if it's something like paint, this don't stay in there, does it? No, it does not. That is ah. the shoe. That's the what? That, they call that the shoe. Where does it go? It ain't light, that's for sure. So it acts as a uh, funnel, kind of? It, basically, it, it, because you got the, the hopper, and you got a mouse hole in the back of the hopper. The product goes out the back of the hopper. See this hole right there? Yeah. Falls out onto the shoe. You can see how there's lobes on the main shaft. So it sits here and creates a shaking action. Jeff calls out the mother in law's tongues that never stops flapping. Okay. It's flat on the side, so this sits against the and shaft, it a shake it shakes action. it, which sifts the material. Down, down through the eye of the stone. It's an underrunning burr mill. So there's actually a set of stones right here. There are twin stones. Okay. Yeah, the, the top one's face down, the bottom one's looking at you. Yeah. So the well, bottom one with the flaps that I'm looking at no, is under here. Th th that's for cooling properties, all the ridges and all the No, holes. I missed the, I was looking at the flats on the shaft. Yeah. But yeah, the ridges in the, yeah. in the stone, yeah. And then you have a wheel right here. It's basically like a teeter-totter. You have a, the warm gear on the wheel side. Yeah. You got a pivot in the middle. You got the stone. So you just turn that, and it raises and lowers the stone. So if you want to crack some wheat, some corn for Joe, or yeah, or if you want to, you know, you, make cornmeal. You can crack corn, or you can make flour, depending on the. I, I can make anything how, in between. How, how close the stones yeah. are, basically. Yeah. You can set however you want it. Yep. Do you ever? Do, do the stones ever touch? Oh, you can touch them. Or if you if you're not right if you if you're not running the speed right for how you have the feed set you can start hearing them start you touch them it I mean it's loud and you can smell it it burns the product it puts out quite a distinct odor when you touch them I've, I've touched them okay, you got to learn how to mill somehow and sometimes you got people talking to you and stuff and you're not paying attention and rampant badness ensues. Mm-hmm.